Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Lipkowitz and I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams Capital Properties in Bethesda, Maryland. I specialize in both residential and equestrian properties and today I wanna to talk about buying horse farms. So the first things I wanna talk about are zoning and permitting. Now in terms of zoning, you may think things are set in stone, but zoning can always change in the future. And while farms tend to be grandfathered in because the counties don't want to decimate farmland, that may mean that you might have some unwelcome neighbors in the future. You know, you may end up with in a commercial zone, you could end up with a housing development right next door and a lot of farm owners are not interested in that. So you really need to pay attention to any upcoming changes in the zoning for the county you're looking in. Now, when it comes to permitting, I bring this up because a lot of farm buyers actually buy land so that they can build their barn and their home in the future. But, you know, land is a pretty risky investment actually because you don't always know if it's gonna perk. And a perk test, a percolation test, essentially um, determines how much water the soil can handle. So, you know, if it turns out that the soil can't handle a septic system for, you know, a two plus bedroom house, well, no septic system means no house and no house means no barn, probably in most cases. So you really need to be aware of that. Um, you can often get that testing done before the sellers have gotten it done and that's done by the county. Um, Oftentimes, you know, lenders, if you're getting a construction loan, will want to know that beforehand and they'll want really detailed plans. So the next thing I want to talk about is ease of use. Oh my goodness. A lot of these farms now, you know, I've talked to a number of buyers recently and they've said, why do we have all these huge houses and these tiny barns with no storage or, you know, the barns are 50 miles away from the house. And really, I mean, having a poorly designed farm is going to make you want to quit. I mean, having a farm is hard enough, but having a poorly designed farm, whether you've built it yourself or, you know, you've bought it because you really like the house, you know, I find that's usually a pretty uncommon. Most farm buyers buy because they like the barns and the acreage, not the house. Uh, and that's really been a problem in Maryland. We've got a lot of really large homes with really poorly designed barns and facilities. So that's been an issue I've come up against a lot with a number of buyers. Um, but, you know, again, just keep, be on the lookout for ease of use. It needs to have good storage. And that means, you know, feed tack rooms. That means, you know, hay storage, tractor storage. It needs to be easy to get to from the house. Uh, especially, you know, you're living on property for a reason. You're living there for ease of use. So, you know, it needs to be easy to access um, and it needs to be designed well. Um, you know, flooding is an issue with a lot of barns. I find people put, you know, their arenas in a really bad spot. So, you know, just pay attention to the layout, um, whether it's, you know, your plans for building or something that you're looking at to buy that's already up, you know, just make sure walk through your daily steps. Make sure that that's going to be a routine you're going to be okay with. So I talked a little bit about this, but neighbors really can make or break you. I mean, you know, if you've got a neighbor that doesn't want a horse farm as a neighbor, uh, you know, they can really cause some major problems and it can be a health and safety issue depending on the business or the, you know, homes next door. So you really want to make sure the neighbors are, you know, friendly and helpful and sometimes that can be really hard to gauge before you move in because you know sellers don't necessarily want to disclose that they've had an issue with the businesses being too loud or the neighbors you know feeding their horses over the fence or whatever it's going to be so you know i encourage buyers to go talk to the neighbors i mean it's not against the law if they have a don't trespass sign no trespassing sign on their property maybe skip them and that's probably clue enough but you know i find that most neighbors are more than willing to chat with you about the neighborhood and it really never hurts to go knock on a few doors next i want to talk about budgeting because farms will always cost more than you think they will almost always i mean you know you're always going to need more equipment than you think you need and you know there's always going to be more maintenance than you're prepared for i mean farms are really kind of a money pit to be honest so it's really smart for you if especially if you're coming in from out of the area it's really smart to reach out to some local barn owners and get an idea of the going rates on hay on feed on bedding um you know and get an idea of you know even trailering if you're planning on trailering a lot you don't have a trailer to haul i mean just getting the local rates on everything and really doing that math and having a budget in mind before you go in is really important and part of that is i've talked about this in a, my last video i believe you have to be really careful because the lender might give you a number that you can spend and that's all well and good 
but you may spend that number and then realize that you've decimated your savings that you would have otherwise used towards equipment and maintenance and you know rainy day funds and it's really important that you already have a budget in mind so that you're not overspending on the farm itself and then you're also not you know hurting when you need to maintain your farm another thing buyers really need to be thinking about is whether or not they actually have the time to put into maintaining a farm so hiring help for a farm can feel impossible nowadays i think you know people are just finding that it's really hard to keep people you know in those sorts of jobs so you know you need to know if you have the time and the energy to actually care for a farm which you know obviously involves you know taking care of the animals but it involves a lot of mowing a lot of weeding a lot of seeding pastures a lot of maintenance on the house and barns i mean it's endless so you really need to make sure that either you have the money to hire somebody or you have the time to put in accessibility is another really important piece of finding a horse farm to buy so you really need to make sure that you are in a good place if you have a commute you need to think about that if you've got clients you need to think about where they're coming from you know accessibility and you know access to good well-maintained roads um you know so that you can get in and out if you have an emergency you can get the horse to the equine hospital you know there's really a lot of elements to accessibility but i find you know if you've got clients especially it's really important not to buy a farm in the middle of nowhere because it's going to be really hard to come across clients specifically if your clients are you know in a lot of maryland barns your clients are people coming from baltimore and dc they work in the district and then they're commuting to the barn after work so you really need to think about where you're located I find that a lot of farms have issues with drainage and this is just because you know you get a lot of DIY installed outdoor arenas and stuff like that you know so the barns people tend to be smart about and it tends not to be too much of an issue but we do get a lot of rain here in Maryland throughout the year uh, particularly this last year uh, has been pretty rough for us so you really need to think about um, flooding and drainage and it's really important too to also think about water running off your property onto somebody else's that can cause major legal issues so if you're putting in something like a new patio or a new indoor and it's causing flooding on your neighbor's property you're going to be in trouble if you can see the property in the rain great i tend to love showing properties in the rain just because it really gives us a very um rudimentary idea of where the property stands with flooding and leaking and you know things like that so Drainage is a major, major issue. It needs to be a part of your plan and it needs to be something you are on the lookout for when you're looking at properties. Lastly, I wanna talk about borders. So a lot of people buy farms thinking, oh, I'll just cover costs by renting out some stalls or some pasture space to borders, but they've never actually dealt with borders before. And now I'm a lifelong boarder, so, you know, when I tell you borders can be the worst, I know that I'm throwing myself under the bus a little bit, but borders can be really high maintenance. They're going to put wear and tear on your property no matter how great they are. And it can, you know, if you're not careful, it can lead to a lot of liability issues. So if you are thinking about buying a farm so you can rent it out as a boarding facility, just really do your research, make sure uh, you're not getting into something that you are not going to be able to handle or that you're not going to enjoy uh, because there are wonderful borders out there. There are people who've had borders at their farm for decades and it's not an issue, but you know, you really have to be sure that that's something you want to do because as a lot of farm owners will tell you, borders are the worst. Also the best sometimes, but a lot of times the worst. So thank you for watching. Again, my name is Sarah Lipkowitz and I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams Capital Properties in Bethesda, Maryland. I specialize in both residential and equestrian properties. Stay tuned.